Today we're getting into the latest Tesla related news, including updates on autopilot safety, Tesla possibly hitting 1 million deliveries this year, Cybertruck preparation at superchargers, a Toyota yoke steering wheel, a flying EV supposed to come this year and more, so let's get into it. First up today, let's talk about autopilot safety. By now you have probably seen the reports of a Tesla accident that resulted in two casualties. The crash had two victims, one in the back seat and one in the front. A Model S was likely moving at a high rate of speed, went off road and hit some trees and then ended up catching fire. First off, I wanna say that this is tragic and we should be sensitive when talking about accidents involving people's lives. The initial reports came out blaming the accident on autopilot with lots of speculation and it almost always does with an accident involving a Tesla due to their controversial self-driving technologies that are not 100% perfect. The police at the scene initially said, quote, I can tell you our investigators are certain no one was in the driver's seat at the time of the crash. This led to nearly every headline blaming it on Tesla Autopilot since Tesla has the most available self-driving features of any company. Additionally, reports said that it took four hours to put out the fire and over 32,000 gallons of water. More on that in a second. Many people were already questioning the validity of the blame being put on autopilot since autopilot needs your input to prove you are paying attention. Well, I haven't commented on this yet because there wasn't much information and I figured something else would come out and now it has. First, regarding this accident and autopilot, Elon replied to someone questioning a Wall Street Journal article. The original Wall Street Journal article said, fatal Tesla crash in Texas believed to be driverless. A Twitter user questioned that since you have to have your hands on the steering wheel every 10 seconds or autopilot will give all all sorts of alarms and eventually turn on the flashers and slow down to a stop. It is very difficult to keep autopilot driving for you without you in the front seat without actively abusing the system. Additionally, autopilot cannot go massively over the speed limit like this crash appears to have been. Elon responded to this on Twitter saying, quote, your research as a private individual is better than professionals at Wall Street Journal. Data logs recovered so far show autopilot was not enabled and this car did not purchase full self-driving. Moreover, standard autopilot would require lane lines to turn on, which this street did not have. Of course, NHTSA is doing a full investigation and we'll see what they conclude, but it does point to somewhat of a double standard between Tesla and other vehicles. Since Teslas include self-driving tech and we've seen owners misuse it, it's always assumed that it is Tesla's fault when an accident occurs. Other brands' vehicles get in accidents every day and we hardly see details on any of those. I'm not trying to say that we shouldn't be safe and investigate Tesla accidents and fires, but over and over again, it seems that the damage is done to Tesla's image with headlines and then it turns out to not have been autopilot's fault at all. Additionally, Palmer Buck, the fire chief for the fire department that extinguished this Model S fire said, quote, with respect to the firefight, unfortunately, those rumors grew way out of control. It did not take us four hours to put out the blaze. Our guys got there and put down the fire within two to three minutes, enough to see the vehicle had occupants. After that, it was simply cooling the car as the batteries continued to have a chain reaction due to damage. So what it currently seems like is that something odd happened with no driver in the driver's seat, but autopilot was not the cause of the accident. Accident. Additionally, the fire did not rage for four hours as initially stated. We'll see what the final word is once NHTSA does their full investigation. And again, this is a tragic event for those involved along with their families. If you're worried about Tesla Autopilot and how it will act without a driver in the front seat, I'll link to a video below of someone taking their seatbelt off while using the full self-driving beta. It's an overwhelming amount of alarms and the vehicle pulls itself over as soon as he unbuckles. Regarding overall autopilot safety, Tesla just released their Q1 2021 results. Quote, in the first quarter, we registered one accident for every 4.19 million miles driven in which drivers had autopilot engaged. For those driving without autopilot, but with our active safety features, we registered one accident for every 2.05 million miles driven. For those driving without autopilot and without our active safety features, we registered one accident for every 978,000 miles driven. By comparison, NHTSA's most recent data shows that in the United States, there's an automobile crash every 484,000 miles. Elon tweeted these stats and added, quote, Tesla with autopilot engaged now approaching 10 times lower chance of accident than average vehicles. He further explained those statistics saying, quote, essentially passive autopilot, car intervenes only when crash probability is high, cuts crash in half. Active autopilot, car is driving itself, cuts crashes in half again. Doesn't mean there are no crashes, but on balance, autopilot is unequivocally safer. 
Very impressive numbers from Tesla Autopilot, even if it isn't perfect. What's important to keep in mind here though, is that Autopilot is largely only used on freeways, so those comparisons may not still be quite apples to apples. Still very impressive and good news for Tesla's future self-driving endeavors. One more quick update from Elon and self-driving came in response to a tweet about the full self-driving beta. Elon said, quote, new FSD rendering approach coming that better represents neural network probability vector space. Basically, cool stuff is coming and it will be clearer on screen just how much is going on under the hood, so to speak. We'll see when that comes, but the latest update on the beta is that it is coming to all customers no later than June. The full self-driving subscription should be coming in May as well, and that is apparently a sure thing. So we'll see if both of those come to be. Hopefully they do, because it would be great to see a ton of new features come to Tesla owners in the next few months. Next up, one of Tesla's big up and coming competitors, Xpeng, has some giant news that seems almost fake, but it's real. Back in October of 2020, Xpeng unveiled their flying vehicle. It has eight propellers and a capsule like frame, and is designed to hold one person. It was a fun concept, however, they are going all in on this idea much more than previously expected. This week at the Shanghai Auto Show, Xpeng showed off this flying vehicle again, and it has been updated. It still seats one person, and Xpeng plans to actually produce this vehicle in the near future. Quote, so it's intended to be a flying car of the future. We have invested in a separate company that designs and makes flying devices. Now we actually aim to combine the technology of Xpeng with the flying device company to make flying cars. Our intention is to design a car that actually can drive on the road, but it can take off vertically and fly in low altitude scenarios below 100 meters. That's something we actually will try to reach commercial testing by the end of this year. And hopefully we will have something to show the public and allow the public to test drive sometime next year. So Tesla is developing their current electric cars, trying to scale those up and lower prices. And they're also going all in on full self-driving and promising robo taxis in the near future. Xpeng is similar to Tesla in the development of their current cars, selling their P7 and P5 among others, but they are talking about flying vehicle technology for the near future. At Xpeng's event yesterday, they talked about their fourth generation manned electric flying vehicle, Traveler X1, which has been in development for over eight years, and they plan to increase investment into R&D for flying vehicles specifically. In fact, they even shared a roadmap for those vehicles. It starts with the flying vehicles they have already unveiled, then the X2 will come out by the end of this year. Year. It will seat two people, and they will be giving test drives by the end of next year. Long term, they are pouring more and more into R&D so that these drone-looking vehicles can truly be integrated into their normal cars. The propellers can fold up and will fit in your garage along with the car, and it can be charged just like your car can. Multiple times in this report, it specifically stated that they want these to be available by the end of next year. What a crazy thing, but it could end up similar to some of what Elon Musk has talked about or teased with a flying roadster or a hovering roadster. Elon Musk was on Joe Rogan's podcast and talked about the possibility of being able to hover for a short period of time in the roadster. It's one of those things that we think will never come to be, but it seems like Xpeng is getting pretty serious about this. They're actually in development of vehicles for the next couple years, and I can't wait to see whatever this ends up being. Maybe next year we'll see these drones actually get produced and that'll be it. Or maybe Xpeng will expand this technology and make it available on their sedans and make it capable of flying in a couple of years. Again, these details came from the president of Xpeng talking to Yahoo Finance and speaking to the press in general at this recent event. So it's not just a rumor, it's what the company is talking about and planning for in the same way Elon Musk talks about full self-driving and robo-taxis. Next up is another story related to Tesla, but really about Toyota. When Tesla unveiled the Roadster, there was a yoke steering wheel, as expected on many insane racing cars. They then unveiled that wheel on the Cybertruck, but the real shock came when they put this on both the refreshed Model S and Model X. This led to many questions of the legality of this wheel and NHTSA looking into whether or not it was legal. Then Tesla was seen testing these vehicles in the wild with round wheels as well as yoke wheels, and many people think that the yoke wheel looks awesome or terrible. Well, just this week, Toyota unveiled their new BZ4X electric crossover vehicle. They gave hardly any details besides some exterior and interior looks, but nothing has really been said as far as range or really any other specs. The big design element that pops right out is a yoke steering wheel. Yes, a Toyota crossover with a yoke steering wheel. I'd be very interested to learn if this concept for the wheel was in the works before January, when Tesla unveiled the new Model S, or if it came after the fact. Toyota's explanation for the wheel is that, quote, with the system that no longer has a physical connection between the helm and the wheels, the driver will need to apply a lot less lock to make the car turn, thus eliminating the need to take their hands off the steering wheel when negotiating tighter turns. 
It's very interesting to see this come from another brand, and especially Toyota. When Tesla unveiled it, it seemed to shock the whole world, and now it's just on a fairly normal looking Toyota crossover. We'll have to wait for more details and see why this vehicle has the yoke steering wheel, but hopefully it has something to do with it being very sporty and a blast to drive, like most electric cars and especially Teslas. It's Toyota's first true electric car and it is launching them into the future as they plan to make a number of other electric vehicles off of this platform. Now back to Tesla. Last year was a huge milestone for Tesla hitting 500,000 vehicle deliveries. Many expect that they could hit 1 million vehicle deliveries this year after a solid first quarter delivering 184,800. Usually first quarters are slow for Tesla relatively, so it should only accelerate in the remainder of the year. Additionally, they now have the Model Y being made in China and should have the Model Y getting delivered from Giga Berlin and Giga Texas by the end of this year. Tesla has not set official delivery targets for 2021, but updates from their supply chain suggest that they are aiming for over 1 million deliveries in 2021. According to the chairman of HOTA, along with another Tesla supplier, Tesla has a production and delivery target of 1 million vehicles this year. For the details, the company that makes Tesla's Bluetooth tire pressure detectors has received orders for 4 million units for the Tesla Model 3 and Model Y. This would mean 4 per vehicle and 1 million vehicles. Additionally, this is only orders for this specific part for the Model 3 and Y, so if Tesla really makes all of these vehicles, the Model S and X could add on top of that. If this was only one supplier, I wouldn't attach much validity to it, but we know Tesla is getting aggressive with their delivery timelines, and now two separate suppliers have confirmed their 1 million delivery goal. I think it makes complete sense that Tesla would have an internal goal of twice as many deliveries as last year, since they are opening up many new factories and the Model Y seems to be selling incredibly well. Regarding the Cybertruck that could launch by the end of this year, one big question has been, how will these things fit in supercharger spaces? The Cybertruck is far bigger than any of Tesla's current vehicles, and supercharger stops, over 2,000 plus worldwide, are not designed to have gigantic Cybertrucks charging. We're not sure how they will handle previously installed locations, but a new charger in Texas could be pointing to what Tesla is planning to do for the future. A Twitter user visited Tesla's new supercharger station in Grapevine, Texas, that has 12 V3 stalls. It opened on on April 7th, and four of the 12 stalls have specifically large parking spaces. These photos show that in order to plug in and actually reach, a Model 3 had to be parked very far to the side of the charging space. This is much larger than a typical spot, and since it's only four spots like this, it points to Tesla making larger Cybertruck compatible spots for the future. We'll see what this means for the future, as well as all of the remaining supercharger stations that have already been built out. Now there are a couple of new EVs that just got unveiled right after I put out my last video detailing all of the EVs coming in 2022. First, VW unveiled their ID6. It's built on the exact platform as the ID4, which currently gets a maximum range of 260 miles. So this larger vehicle should get less range, but feel nearly identical. It's about a foot longer than the ID4 and includes a ton of storage space, making it one of the largest EV SUVs available. Currently though, it is only going to be available in China. According to VW, quote, with the new ID6, we are laying the foundations for at least 50% of our cars sold in China being electric by 20 30. We are maintaining momentum and gradually increasing our range of MEB cars. By 2023, Volkswagen will have a total of 8 ID models in China, making MEB nationwide there. The economies of scale that we have achieved allow us to offer the latest technology at an affordable price and thus further expand our electric offensive. Next is the Audi A6 e-tron to come in 2022. Audi unveiled it at the Shanghai Auto Show, and Audi calls the new platform it's built on, quote, premium platform electric. It will feature a 100 kilowatt hour battery, be able to charge up to 270 kilowatts on an 800 volt charger, and get a zero to 62 miles per hour in less than four seconds. It should also get around 390 to 400 miles of range on the battery pack, which is very impressive. For the time being, it is only labeled as a concept, but it's expected that the production version will be fairly similar to the launch version hitting the road in late 2022. No pricing yet, but it should hopefully be a lot cheaper than the expensive $100,000 plus Audi e-tron GT. Mercedes unveiled details about two new electric vehicles. First is the EQB, which is a compact SUV, adding to their recently announced EQS. According to Mercedes, quote, the new EQB offers a generous amount of space and a maximum boot capacity of 1,710 liters, thanks to having the long wheelbase of the GLB. Last up today, Mercedes also teased the EQT, an all-electric minivan that will reportedly be fully unveiled next month by Tony Hawk. Details are slim and it is still only a concept, but Mercedes says that it will be near production ready and will be unveiled on May 10th. 
Again, Tony Hawk will be involved in the unveiling, which seems like an odd collaboration to me, but I'm excited to see it. That's all the latest Tesla news for today, so in the meantime, if you want to keep up on all the latest EVs coming from mainstream companies in 2022, you can check out that vehicle linked over here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.